Is anyone shocked that Ennis doesn't have a bunch of comics where the storylines repeatedly blaspheme Allah and Muhammad? Ennis's evil run with Marvel's character The Punisher heavily influenced the 2008 film Punisher Warzone as well as the Marvel Netflix show The Punisher. You wrong. All of them, they all think that you're a monster. But I know that you're not. You're not. You sure about that? In Garth Ennis's run on The Punisher, The Punisher is a glorified godless atheist who has no fear of God. He has no sense of objective transcendent morality and therefore no real moral compass. He's a psychopathic maniacal serial killer who enjoys torturing and murdering people with his own twisted amoral code. In Ennis's comic called Punisher Kills the Marvel Universe, Ennis has the Punisher even murdering all the X-Men and the Avengers after his family was unintentionally killed in the collateral damage of their superhero war, saving the last bullet for himself. This satanic philosophy of making evil characters into heroes and making them look good and genuine Christians being depicted as evil is promoted in comics by many of the elite comic writers, including Alan Moore, who as we shall explore later in this documentary, is an admitted practitioner of Satanist Aleister Crowley's magic, which Crowley formulated to contact demonic entities. Crowley's fascist mission was to bring an end to Christianity and to usher in a new eon with a Superman race of elitists running the world under the Antichrist. Ennis has followed Moore's advice, and Moore refers to Ennis's demonic comics as, quote, magnificent work. Some of the top comic writers admit that they are inspired by demonic entities when writing their comics. Others admit occult activity like telepathy, which from a biblical perspective would entail demonic entities using more than one human artist and or writers as channels or human puppets to further what the Bible refers to as doctrines of demons. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 warns, quote, Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last times some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. And speaking of working on his hugely successful run with Steve Dillon on the 66 issue of DC's Vertigo series Preacher, Ennis claims that they didn't have to talk or communicate because they were relying on the occult phenomena of telepathy. A lot of people talk about Preacher, but it barely sold half what that Punisher run did. And all of a sudden, I realized what this did for me was it got my work in front of a mainstream Marvel audience who might never go anywhere near something like Preacher. You and Steve spent years on Preacher, then you're working on Punisher. How did you and Steve work together on it? We worked together very, very simply. We almost never talked about work. There was no, almost no creative interaction. I know that sounds odd, people are surprised, but each of us simply trusted the other to get on with the job. I would supply him with scripts that kept him entertained, that I wouldn't ask him for the impossible, and he would give me good artwork that told the story exactly the way I wanted it, and that's all it took. In the 25 years I knew him, we almost never talked about what we were doing at that particular time. We talked about anything else but that's um, fascinating. There was never any, can you redraw this? There was never any, you'll need to rewrite this sequence because I can't. That never happened. It was, it was really just a kind of what we call telepathy. What we call telepathy. Ennis' pride and joy comic, Preacher, is just filled with more of his god hate, only in a different package to influence the young masses. The Preacher is a character named Reverend Jesse Custer, who is possessed with supernatural powers after being possessed by a fallen angel named Genesis. Their mission is to literally search for God in an effort to, you guessed it, kill him. What Ennis lacks in the way of creativity as a writer, he does gain in the way of blasphemous consistency. The Preacher channels the Genesis demon that possesses him as the voice, thereby hypnotizing people to do his demonic will. Even Yahoo News Entertainment asked the question, after a town of formerly God-fearing people went up in flames and self-destructed because of their turning away from God to wanton immorality, if Ennis' hero, the preacher, was not behind it all, using Satanist Aleister Crowley's credo, do what thou wilt, with Yahoo asking, quote, did he, meaning the preacher, petulantly use the voice on Anvil to compel them to chase do what thou wilt satanic bliss in the face of God's absence? The AMC adaptation of Ennis' comic premiered as a television series in 2016, only after HBO rejected it as an adaptation of Ennis' work because HBO deemed it, quote, too stylistically dark and religiously controversial, end quote. Garth Ennis admitted in his introduction to True Faith which as we've seen reflects his wish fulfillments, that some of those elements ended up in Preacher. After all, in both storylines, the hero sets out to kill God.